So we're going to focus on PhotoView 360 now and then take a brief introductory look to SolidWorks Visualize. So firstly, the preview window, uh, just shown towards the bottom left here, provides a real quick reference as to how our render will look and allows us to quickly assess any changes that we're making to our model uh, before we commit to doing a render. We now have a resolution slider bar towards the bottom. So here, if we move this down to the bottom left, we're gonna get a very quick, uh, low quality preview. If we move it up to the right, we're gonna get a faster, higher quality review. Sometimes we'd find that pressing the pause button within the, when, uh, the render preview window wouldn't actually give us uh, a pause. But you'll see now that if I drag and drop an appearance onto a particular area of the model that the preview window doesn't update. So if we just remove that appearance now, we'll return back and we'll just reset that for us uh, just to get back to normal. So it's, it's a much more predictable behaviour than it has been in the past. Now one of the things that people do fairly often uh, with PhotoView 360 is use the preview window to manipulate uh, and see any changes that we're making to the scene settings. So you'll see here I can drag and manipulate around these values. I can also control the position of the environment's rotation, so giving us different lighting effects. But the one problem with this tool is that we can't compare uh, the changes we've made against our original image. There's no real way to do that, aside from saving the preview images and maybe manually arranging them in a grid style. So to address that issue, 2016 includes the introduction of scene illumination proof sheets. So what the tool will do is it will take the default information within the render scene and it will then perform a iterative set of changes to the render. So we'll see we have our current selection in the middle. We then have uh, incremental changes to the rendering brightness, the background brightness and scene reflectivity on the left. On the right we have an incremental upwards change to the brightness, background brightness and scene reflectivity. What we can do here is we can choose any of the images. It loads that into our middle section and recalculates left and right uh, the alternative changes to that. So very quickly we can pick any of these images and see the impact that's having. We can compare it against the original using the tab in the center and we can also introduce uh, an in, uh, you know a high level incremental change to those as well. If we've got a little bit more time, we can also turn on the ability to alter, to alter the position of the lights. So you'll see here it's calculated each of those for me. <clears throat> Again, we can choose from those and it will recalculate each of those images. Once we're happy, we can say OK and it will load the settings that we've agreed to back into uh, the scene. We can then obviously commit to our final render at that point as well. So a really nice introduction to the tool. If we switch over to another assembly here, uh, we have uh, a governor here with a motion study attached, allowing it to spin round like so. Moving components like this, sometimes uh, you, know, you want an added impact to the animation. So we may want to allow the objects to blur as they rotate, and this is something that other tools have had, but we, uh, within PhotoView 360, haven't had the ability to do this. So if we turn on the option to create a rendered animation with PhotoView 360, we now get an additional box towards the bottom to allow us to include motion blur. Just to save us a little bit of time here, I'm just going to open a video that was generated with motion blur, so you can see the impact that effect has. So a much more effective way of communicating movement within the assemblies. What we can also do is drag the motion study to a particular view, launch our final render tool, and it will give us the same option to whether include motion blur in the static image or not. So if I opt to include that, I'll have the same set of slider bars to adjust the position and offset, and we'll just let that final render complete.
So we can get some really nice effects now with the motion blur within PhotoView 360, giving us much more ability to communicate our designs more effectively. One of the final updates here is the ability to do a rendered view with dimensions attached shown on screen at the moment. So this is something we haven't been able to do in the past and again is a nice addition to the software. So we've seen the ability to render annotations and dimensions. We can preview more effectively uh, and we've also have a render threshold slider bar. We saw the introduction of the illumination proof sheets and also motion blur for animations and static renders. <clears throat> We're going to take a look now at a new tool coming in January of 2016 called SolidWorks Visualize. To quickly and easily create realistic, high-quality images, SolidWorks Professional and Premium now comes bundled with SolidWorks Visualize. This new connection supports a seamless workflow between SolidWorks CAD and SolidWorks Visualize, enabling photorealistic visualization without tying up the SolidWorks license. SolidWorks Visualize's interface reduces photorealistic visualization into just five easy steps. Importing of models, application of materials, environments, cameras, and final rendering can now be done by anyone in the least amount of time. The viewport can be rendered using Preview for approximated rendering, Fast for high performance ray tracing, and Accurate, which can utilize multiple GPUs for fully photographic ray tracing. In each mode, what you see in the viewport is what you get in the final image. Dragging materials from the library enables everyone to paint their model incredibly quickly and easily. Materials can also be customized by adjusting the surface finish, color, texture, and more. Additional materials can also be obtained from the online community, which contains loads of free, professionally made assets. Just like materials, environments are applied by dragging and dropping them into the viewport from the library. Environments can be dynamically positioned and adjusted to get the lighting, shadows, and reflections just right. Multiple cameras can be used in order to generate a variety of image styles. Depth of field, artistic filters, and other camera effects help to deliver truly photographic images. Final renders can be initiated using either default or pre-configured render profiles. Once started, the image progress, estimated time remaining, and pause option are conveniently displayed. 